We're going to look at the parable of the 10 virgins this morning. And don't worry, this is a PG message. If you have not read this parable, I'm not going to say anything in front of your children if they're in here that you would be like, why is she talking about that? But this parable is phenomenal. And I want you to know that this is an intense section of scripture that sometimes we just read over or dismiss because maybe we don't understand it. We love Jesus the shepherd, right? Oh, be our shepherd. But Jesus the prophet is 100% accurate. So every other prophet that has ever lived is not 100% accurate. Jesus is 100% accurate as a prophet. And he walked in the fullness of the fivefold ministry. And I'll explain that a little bit more later. But we need to understand when he prophesies and tells us a parable or a story, we need to lean in and go, I don't understand this, God. Can you help me understand? So as we read this parable together, here's what I want you to know, that Jesus is the bridegroom. He is the groom. And we are his disciples, the 10 virgins. So that's what you need to understand. We are the disciples and he is the groom. So as we walk through this, we're gonna go through Matthew 25 verses one through 13, the parable of the 10 virgins. At that time, now, just so you know, right before this, Jesus has just given a prophecy at the end of the age. And you know when those prophecies come, the disciples are like, time out, I like have 10 questions. So like, can you give us a timeline? Like, when is this gonna happen? And even Jesus tells us, I don't even know when I'm returning. The angels don't know when I'm returning. Only Father God knows when I will return for my bride. So be prepared. Be prepared. So he says this, at that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the groom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they didn't take oil with them, but the wise ones took their oil and their flasks with their lamps. And when the groom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. In the middle of the night, there was a shout, here comes the groom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins got up, trimmed their lamps, and the foolish ones said to the wise ones, give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. And the wise ones answered, no. There won't be enough for us and for you. Go instead to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. And when they had gone out to buy some, the groom arrived. And those who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the rest of the virgins also came and said, Master, Master, open up for us. And he replied, Truly, I don't know you. Therefore, be alert, because you do not know either the day or hour. Again, who does not like to read these scriptures? You're like, nope, 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 nope. Those are difficult things to hear, but there is so much wisdom in this. So how do we live prepared? Number one is this. Well, it's kind of, you know, obvious, but be prepared for literally anything. Be prepared for anything. We just moved here and realized that you have to be prepared for hurricanes and you need to have some friends that you need to ask, like, what are we supposed to do? We have no idea. We would be those people. And so we realized that there is a preparedness that you have to be ready when hurricanes come. When you're pregnant, what are you doing? You are reading every book, figuring out what is it to be a parent. And then on that day at the hospital, after you stay there a couple of days, they give you the kid to take home. And you think that everything that you have read has prepared you for everything you're about to do. You're like, wow. Ah! There are a lot of things we prepared for, but again, how are we prepared in the spiritual? If we read this, it says this, in the middle of the night, in verse six, was a shout, here's the groom, come out to meet him. Now think about this, when it comes to a wedding, having a midnight wedding is not the norm. That's not something that you would do. It's an awkward, unexpected time for a wedding to take place, right? But when we look at this, when we live with anticipation, this is pointing to anticipation. If we live filled up with the oil of the Holy Spirit, if we live with anticipation, if we live wide awake to what God is doing, it doesn't matter if he shows up and moves something in our life and says, be obedient here. I want you to do this. I want you to lay that down. You go, no worries. I'm ready because God, you move however you want to move. There's an anticipation that we lean into. Now, if there were five foolish and five wise, how did the wise ones know what to do in the times that they were in? And how can we understand how to walk in wisdom in the times that we're living in? Anybody else want to walk in wisdom in the times that we're living in? Yes, and I think even this year as we pray, I mean, there are so many things coming around the corner. We all know another election season is coming next year. So we're like, on our knees, praying, but it's like, God, we want you to move. We want to understand and have wisdom, knowing what to do in the times that you have called us to. Well, if we look at this, it's kind of simple. The foolish didn't take oil with them, except for what was already in the lamps, but the wise took extra 
flasks of oil with them in preparation for possible delay. Everyone had oil in their lamps when they showed up. Everyone showed up. All 10 were invited. All 10 RSVP'd yes. All gathered at the bridegroom's house. All 10 lamps had oil in it. The outside was the same. It's what was on the inside that made the difference. From the outside, you couldn't tell who was prepared and who was not prepared. All 10 went to sleep. There's nothing wrong with going to sleep, but are you prepared when that trumpet shouts or when someone heralds and says, hey, this is what we're going to do. We're going to move here. Are you prepared? Are you so filled up with the Holy Spirit? Do you have that extra flask of oil that you're like, it doesn't matter, God, because I trust you. Whatever you want to do, I'm going to move with you. I am prepared for anything. Wisdom prompts watchfulness and demonstrates preparation. And we all nod off at times, do we not? We have all gotten lethargic in our faith. We have all gotten lackadaisical. We have all fallen asleep at the wheel of our faith. But we need that spiritual caffeine to wake back up again, the oil of the Holy Spirit to be poured in so that we can walk and live prepared. Amen? So the unwise walked in presumption. Ha <laughs> ha! But the wise with anticipation. There are also two other elements here that I see. There is being prepared and being tested by the delay, being prepared and being tested by the delay. I am a horrible packer. Is there anybody else where you, you overpack everything and you're the annoying person where every, yeah, okay, thank you. I'm not alone, but it's like, I am the person where I'm like, I could totally do a carry on. I got this. I mean, I travel and speak and do all these things. I'm in planes all the time, but yet I still am a horrible packer. What is the problem? But here's the deal. I don't know if I'm going to wear my hair naturally curly or straight, so I need to bring my products. I don't know how I'm going to feel with my shoes, so I've got to bring a couple of options. I don't know how I'm going to feel on the day that I need to get up there and preach. Do I want to be comfy or do I want to look, you know, different? So i got to have some options. But here's the deal. If you travel with me, I'm probably prepared for you. I'm prepared for myself. I'm prepared if you bring a friend. I'm ready. It's annoying when you have to check a bag because... Does anybody else notice how slow the baggage is here if you check a bag? Okay, sorry, I digress. Um, that's new for me. But <laughs> so, so delays, what do they do? We're, we're either prepared or we have to realize that delays test us. You know when you're on a plane and there's a delay? Anybody love people watching, the angry people? It's so funny. I just laugh so hard. I'm like, I don't know about you when they're like, hey, we're so sorry, but there's some work that we need to do either on the tires of the engine or the this or the that when they tell you. People are like, rah! I'm like, I don't want to die today. I'm okay with the delay. Go ahead and fix whatever you need to fix. Get us on a new plane. I would like it to go up into the air and then land the way it's supposed to land. And so, but I've realized that delays like show what's really inside of us, doesn't it? Delays show us where our control issues are at. Delays show us where our anger is at, where we want to have things go our way. Delay, delays also show us where we're not prepared, right? So we need to pay attention to where we're not prepared. So do we live with presumption or surrender in anticipation? Number two is this. Don't live on borrowed oil. Don't live on borrowed oil says this, and all the wise virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise ones, give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. The wise ones answered, no, there won't be enough for us and for you. So go instead to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. This is why I get so excited about prayer and fasting. Guess where you get to get oil in the presence of God. And there is no scarcity with our God. We received Jesus, which meant we get to walk into the throne room of grace. And then they gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit, which means there's more than enough for everybody. You don't need to go to somebody else to get borrowed revelation. You can get it straight from the throne room of God. And this is so exciting. Oh, I love it. But we live in a day and age where borrowed oil is the norm. What do I mean by that? Okay, I love reading, I love podcasts, I love listening to messages, I love all of these things, right? But if we just sit and borrow oil from other people without it causing us to be a, a catalyst in our lives, to dig into more, to be curious, to go, God, what do you say about that? As you listen to a message like this, don't take my word for it. Go and read the whole of the book of Matthew and seek out what God is trying to say and do. What does this borrowed oil mean? God, I don't understand. This is new for me. See, if we live on borrowed oil, we listen to the podcast, we read the book, we hear the message, and we don't do anything, we are depleted. 
We need to do something with the oil that is given to us. And this is why I love the fivefold ministry. And Jesus gave us the fivefold ministry. What do I mean? Let me read it to you. <laughs> it says this. So Christ himself, Ephesians 4, 11, gave us what? Apostles, prophets, evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to do what? To equip the people for his works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. We have apostles sitting right there. This church was pioneered by an apostle, his son sitting next to him. We have teachers that teach the word. We have evangelists in our world that go, hey, life is not all about you. There are lost people out there that need Jesus. We have prophets that say, repent and turn your heart back to God. And we don't like them very much. But also we have the shepherds. We have shepherds that nurture us and love us through the highs and lows of life. Why? Not so that we can borrow oil, so it is catalytic for us to go, oh my gosh, I need to grow and mature and give this to the people in my world. Amen? Oh, okay. Scarcity is not a thing with God. It's not. There is more than enough. Do we enjoy the benefits of Christian community without a true love and passion and desire for more of Christ? Oh, listen, I want to show you this. I have this Herodian oil lamp that um, I got on Amazon. Um, <laughs> I would love to say I got it in Israel. I didn't go on that trip. So, um, and this is an exact replica of how they lit candles and lanterns back there. Um, <laughs> but this is probably what it looks like. And it's filled with oil, right? Oh, you got to be kidding. We got this, we got this, we got this. Okay, so this would have been, please work. I didn't trim my wig, guys. Um, but this honestly would have been what the lamp looked like. Now, what did they do? So the foolish virgins, they just brought that. It had oil in it. But the wise went to Harris Teeter and got an extra vial <laughs> of oil. <laughs> but this is what they did. The wise had extra so that when this ran out in the middle of the night, what are you doing to get more oil, to lean into the presence of God? Nobody else can do this for you. Nobody else can do this for you. That's why showing up to prayer, if you can, I know you might have kids to drop off, but if you can come in the morning and lean into the presence of God and pray and go, God, I don't understand all of this, but fill me up. Fill me afresh. I want more oil. I want more of your presence. I want to see you move, God. I want to carry more oil. I don't want to expect other people to give me things that they actually cannot give me, that only you can give me. I want to lean into you. That's what this is for. So guess what we have for you in our response time? We have these little vials of oil that the most beautiful team took and filled up for each of you. You can go to the different spaces around this place in response time and take one of these home with you to remind yourself and remember that he is more than enough. And when the oil is in the lamp, what keeps burning? The fire. If you want the fire of God to burn in your life, the passion of God to burn in your life, get more oil. So grab these and remember that he is more than enough. Amen. You know, uh, I'm about to bring this to a close and just share with you the last point. There's this little stretch of road after I drop off Sam in the morning to school. And... <laughs> There's either one person that I pray for on that little loop, or I sing this song. And I, I'm not going to sing it for you, but I, but I sing that song, You Provide the Fire, I'll Provide the Sacrifice. You provide the spirit, and I will open up inside. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Fill me up. I weigh my life down. Fill me up. It's this well-worn pathway. The last thing I want to share with you is number three, it's stay alert, don't hit snooze. How many snoozers, though, do I have in the house for real, for real? Like, yeah, we're just like ruining our circadian rhythm all the time. <laughs> My husband is not a snoozer. To his dismay, I snooze um, all the time. I love to hit the snooze button because, you know, it makes me feel like I get more sleep. 
But we are living in a day and an hour where we, as the body of Christ, the people of God, we cannot afford to hit snooze on our lives. We cannot afford to go, you know what? I'm just going to delay. I'm not going to do that yet, God. I, I know you've been speaking to me the last couple of years, and I've been asking you to like, answer my prayers, but you said just be obedient to this one thing, and I'm totally ignoring that. But, you know, I, I'm just going to fall asleep over here, and I want you to bless me, God. He's like, no, you stay awake. Stay alert. Don't hit snooze. This is about staying wide awake to our lives, confessing our sin quickly. Even this morning as I was preparing, there's just stuff in my heart, and I'm like, God, forgive me for this. I repent of this. I don't want to bring any of this to the platform. I don't want to bring any of this to my children or to my husband. I repent. God, will you forgive me? Repent quickly. Confess our sin quickly. Bring it into the light quickly. Lay our lives down quickly. Forgive and make amends quickly. Cry out to the Holy Spirit daily and say, fill me up. Yes, you received the gift of the Holy Spirit when you were saved. Just want you to know that because you got the fullness of the Trinity when you give your life to Jesus. Just, just so you know. But then it's just like, God, fill me up to overflow. Fill me up. Therefore, be alert because you neither know the day nor the hour. We're at a friend's house, and um, during Hurricane Ian, the fireplace was going. It was really late at night. We were ready to go to sleep. We were all really tired. It was time to go to bed. But then we realized there was an issue with the fireplace, and the fire wasn't going out. There was a fire starting to burn underneath that was actually really dangerous. We didn't know, and it was actually Lee who started to yell. We're like pouring our water bottles on it, and then all of a sudden he goes, this isn't working! Call 911! And we're like, oh, okay. And before we knew it, we were all ready to go to bed, but we were wide awake at the moment we heard call 911. There was an alarm sounding on planet Earth. And we get so comfortable because we got what we got. We got what we need. My family's good. There is a lost and broken world out there that is crying out for God and they don't even know it. And they need us to be the body of Christ that is wide awake to the assignment right in front of us. Amen. Amen. That we would say, yes, Lord. Do what you want to do. We say, yes, Lord. Move how you want to move. I surrender all. I lay my life down. Father, we give you our lives. May we be a bride that is prepared. May we walk in wisdom. May we be like the wise, five wise virgins, not the unwise. God, we want you to fill us up. We want to be paying attention to those in our world that need your love, that need your truth, that need us to come alongside. But may we live from a place of overflow. In Jesus' name, amen.